What am I wearing under my kilt today? A mic pack. Are you ready? <laughs> So Mac and I were just talking about this kilt here. We had done a bit on the show where we discussed having to cut across the bolt to make sure that the pattern would match up with the jacket and vest. The weft stripes are much more pronounced than the warp. If we cut it across the bolt, it's gonna end up like this with horiz more horizontal stripes on the body versus cutting it than the way we would normally cut a kilt and just hemming the bottom and having the, the vertical stripes it's taller this way, which is usually the opposite. Of yeah, yeah, out. yeah. This is a little bit of a weird one, so I want to take a little bit of extra time sorting this out because I think it's going to look better this way than yep. that way. I'm excited to work on this certain because I think it's going to be real pretty when it gets pleated up. Ready to get started. I kind of like how spongy they are, but what I like most about Blossom is the coloring. I think it's a really, really pretty color. I think it's a good one to get. Rocky, what are we doing? <laughs> we are putting Ian in a great kilt, and I'm going to show him how to wear it. It's going to be in the Nordic Heritage Tweed fabric, which we just got in. Shh, don't tell anybody yet. This here is going to be the under apron, so that the part that comes uh, over the I'm going the wrong direction. And we're going to start pleating about here. So for this, you can, if you want your kilt pleated to the stripe, you're going to grab every single stripe a little haphazardly, but not too crazy. Come down, scoot down a little bit. Um, and I'm going to want the bottom of the kilt edge to hit them basically middle of the knee, top of the knee. Now, take your belt, get it down to where your natural waist, or to where your, your waist is, where you're going to want to, you know, cinch tight. Then, straighten this out a tiny bit. All right, up the up. Show the back. All right, so, back it's all pleated, haphazardly, that's fine. If you want to pleat it to a particular stripe, you can. So, at this point, you're going to do the kill belt. And now we gotta get you a play brooch. I've never done it before, so getting outside of my comfort zone is kind of nice. Um, it is a lot of material though, quite warm. I don't know if I'd do it on the rag. <gasps> Cut out all the all the chunks for kilts. Yep. And this is what we have left. Mm -hmm. Let's figure out pleating on it. It's 18 inch, nice healthy set. Yeah. <laughs> well, essentially, it's a nine because it's an A B A C. Mm -hmm. um, okay. How do we? The majority are five yarders. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so we'll focus on five yard pleating. Yep. On to six, five and a half. If we cheat it. Because I do, I want to include either white or yellow stripe yeah. on the kilt. I think it's it's so dominant that we have to have one of the two. And I think out of the two, you, the white one. The white yeah. one stands out a little bit more than that yellow one does. Yeah. 
the only other, see that's, that's too shallow if we did like white, black, yellow, black. Mm -hmm. Somewhere around like this. So it'd be like a three pleat pattern. Yep. Drop pins there. As you do. As you do. Again, and this is how much we have left. Was I smart? Did I write down how much I took off? Did you write it down? No, I didn't. No, of course not. Why would you? We got about 40 or so meters left, maybe 50 meters. So if you want it still available, you make it to a five yarder pleated just like that. I'm Mac. I've been here since 08. I grew up in Southern Lancaster County. Well, I first heard about USA Kilts uh, when I was dating now my wife. She lived out in Phoenixville. I did, was at that time doing Civil War reenacting. We met at an event. She's like, there's a kilt shop downtown. So went into the shop first as a customer, just to look around, bought my first kilt, just slowly got roped in more and more as I went. Rocky gave me a call said, hey, swing by the shop at some point. Do you think you'd make a kilt? And I said, doesn't look too hard. It's a bunch of straight lines. And then I would come in in the evenings and would work on casual kilts throughout the night. And my first real order, I should say, was uh, for the 501st Stormtrooper Battalion. So I had the Prince of Wales bolt basically right next to my station. And that's what I worked on for the first month, month and a half that I was there. I come in in the morning, um, check the schedule, update the schedule. If there's anything new that needs to be added or something, we didn't get a piece of cloth in and it needs to be adjusted. Accessories, catching up on them um, and having the rest of the team work on the kilts. It's like a family. It's, it's, we all, we all bicker with each other. We all fight with each other. We all get along with each other and we will all go to bat for each other. So I used to do, see I've done uh, American Revolution, I've done War of 1812, Civil War, War I, World War II. I've always made stuff for those hobbies myself. Tartans I kind of gear towards for the most part are like the Stort of Appen Tartans, which is a family tartan for me. The most challenging part of this job is working with this room and the controlling of air conditioning and heat that they demand for this room. That is the most challenging part. So today we're going to Valley Forge Park to shoot the trailer for our new upcoming series. We're going to do an America 250 collection where we celebrate a whole bunch of different stuff about America leading up to our semi quincentennial And today we're actually going to shoot the trailer. So on location stuff, just kind of walking around the park, doing some B-roll and things and having a lovely old time memorizing a big long script. Wawa is the only place in America where you have people hold the door for you then run you over in the parking lot. That's the circle of life. <laughs> That's, That's the, the circle of life. <laughs> Uh, path that we wanted to take down to the big open vista down there of my left shoulder um, chained off. Now we're going to go to location two and see what happens. Uh, is there a bug on the lens? Uh, weather's nice today. It's about uh, high 70s. Moving along pretty smooth. I got a lot done this morning, which is good, which I was hoping for. I think the shoot's going pretty well. Rocky is being a trooper. He is not a natural actor by his own admission. And our freedoms, they're a beacon of hope. And that was my line. 
Anyway. So he's trying really hard to do lines. I'm partially responsible for the lines he's trying to say. Our beautiful, awe-inspiring landscapes. That sounds good. Good script. It's a good story. Story of America. How can it be any better? All right, rolling. Rolling. We got a lot of cannons in the shoot. So we'll see how many we can work in. In all seriousness, I did like the uh, the first cannon. As soon as I laid my eyes on it. <laughs> <laughs>